In this video, I'm going to talk about how to solve a vector differential equation when it's a linear equation but a non-homogeneous linear equation with the non-homogeneous term being a constant vector. So here's the statement of the problem. Find the particular solution or a particular solution to x prime of t equal matrix A times x plus constant vector B. So the A in this example I'm going to go through is 1, 1, 2, 1, and the vector B is 2, 3. Now, uh, the method we're going to use here is the method of undetermined coefficients, and it's very similar to the method of undetermined coefficients that we used for second order equations. And recall that the first thing we had to do when looking for a particular guess, you know, the form of a particular solution, was we check the homogeneous solution to make sure that the non-homogeneous term in the equation did not solve the homogeneous equation. So the homogeneous equation in this case was x prime equal a times x. And the way to solve this was to find the eigenvalues and eigenvectors. So what are the eigenvalues of this matrix? Well, the shortcut method of finding the eigenvalues is to write down the equation lambda squared minus the trace of the matrix times lambda plus the determinant of the matrix. So the trace of this matrix is 2, and the determinant is 1, minus 2 is minus 1. And we set that equal to 0 to find the eigenvalues. So we have the equation lambda squared minus 2 lambda oops, no plus minus 1 equals 0. So we can use a characteristic, sorry, we can use a quadratic formula to solve this, and that tells us that the eigenvalues are 2 plus and minus the square root of minus 2 squared is 4 minus, and now I have 4 times 1 times minus 1. So that's going to be a plus 4, all divided by 2. So now I know that the eigenvalues have the form 1 plus minus the square root of 8 divided by 2. But 8 is 4 times 2, so I can pull out one of those 2s, and I get 1 plus and minus 2 times square root of 2 divided by 2. And now I can cancel those two, and I'm left with the eigenvalues of 1 plus and minus square root 2. Okay, so what does this tell us uh, about the particular solution that we need to know? Um, we know that the, so whatever the eigenvectors are for these eigenvalues, we know that the individual solutions to the homogeneous equation will look like e to the 1 plus minus square root 2 times t multiplied by some eigenvector v plus minus. So this is certainly not a function that looks like our constant function. If we had found a zero eigenvalue, then this would be e to the zero t times a constant vector, and then we would have a potential conflict between our non-homogeneous term and the eigen uh, vector or the, the um, so homogeneous solution, the solution to the homogeneous equation. So what that means is that our xp guess is going to be just fine if we make it look like the homogeneous, the non-homogeneous term. So I'm going to just call xp, my guess is going to be that xp of t is equal to some vector u a constant vector u. And now I take a derivative of that. And because u is a constant vector, its derivative is 0. And I set that equal to the right-hand side of the equation, which is a times x, which is u, in this, in this case, plus b. And so I'm solving the equation 1, 1, 2, 1 times u1, u2, plus, 
the vector b is 2, 3. Okay, so I can solve this by any means. I can write it as an augmented matrix in row reduce. I can multiply it out and solve it as a system of two equations and two unknowns by substitution. But what I'm actually going to do is uh, something a little more indirect, um, just to illustrate a point. So I can rewrite this as u1 plus u2 equal minus 2, and I get that by multiplying the vector u1, u2 by the first row of a, and then bringing this to plus 2 over to the other side. And then I get 2 times u1 plus u2 is equal to minus 3. So there's my two equations, and I could solve those. But instead, I'm going to write them in a slightly different vector form. 1, 2 multiplied by u1 plus 1, 1 multiplied by u2. And that has to be equal to minus 2 minus 3. OK, so the reason I've written it like this is because you can now see that this is column 1 of the matrix A. This is column 2. And what I'm really doing when I try to solve the equation above here is I'm trying to find constants u1 and u2 to make a linear combination of the columns that equals minus b. Now, if the columns of A are independent, and they are here, these are independent vectors, then we know that the, uh, any, any other vector can be written as a linear combination of those. So we can always solve this problem as long as the columns of A are independent. Now, the columns of A being independent, that, that is the same as A being invertible. And that's also the same as the determinant being non-zero, which we already knew when we calculated the characteristic, the determinant characteristic equation, the determinant was minus one. Okay, so that means that when A is invertible, or its determinant is non-zero, or its columns are independent, then we can definitely use the guess xp of t is equal to the constant vector u. That will definitely work. Now what happens when a is not invertible? Uh, we'll have to talk about that in a second video. So now I can write down, if I wanted, I could write down my full general solution using this particular solution, x of t equal c1 e to the lambda 1 t times eigenvector 1, which I didn't calculate, but we could in principle, plus c2 e to the lambda 2 t times v2, the second eigenvector, plus the matrix, or so plus the vector that we get by solving this problem here. Oh, we didn't go through that. Well, you can actually do it fairly easy just by inspecting. If you notice that 1 and 1 gives me 2, so I can use u1 to be minus 1 and u2 to be minus 1, and I get 2 and 1 with minus 1s in front gives me minus 3. So the solution is, the particular solution is minus 1, minus 1. Okay, so in a separate video, I'll talk about the case when A is not invertible.